All right, guys, it's me again, and I'm, today I'm doing a very, very basic APA how to do citations guide. Okay, um, APA style can get really, really complicated really fast, um, but we're just going to do some really basic stuff. And um, honestly, if you follow these rules, it's like 97% of getting you where your professors will probably want you to be with APA style. Okay, so first off, we got a bunch of examples here. Um, there are some things that don't require a citation, all right? If it's common knowledge, like the fact that there are 50 states in the United States, you don't have to cite that. That's super common. Um, basically, everybody knows that at this point. The problem is there's not a really good defined line be between what counts as common knowledge and what doesn't. Um, I've been doing this a long time and I will still go on social media and ask fellow professor friends like, hey, is such and such, does that count as common knowledge at this point? Um, and see kind of what they say and, and figure out whether something eh, probably should be cited or eh, you don't need it, okay? Um, when in doubt, ask. The other things that don't need to be cited are any information that comes from you, okay? So like, um, Kevin Jennings was born in such and such a year. I don't need to cite that because it's from me, right? I'm writing about myself. Um, but notice I didn't use the first person because you never use the first person when you're doing academic writing. Um, but if you get the idea from anybody else, you have to cite it, okay? And this is how we cite it. So, uh, Chewbacca would clearly win an arm wrestling contest against Sylvester Stallone. Here, I'm paraphrasing what somebody else has, has said or, or done, right? So I found a, a academic journal article. It talked about the relative strength of different people around the world, around the galaxy, um, and it talks about who is physically stronger than who. Chewbacca, stronger than Sylvester Stallone. So, but I didn't get that information for myself. I found that in a, a, a journal article I read. So. What I have to do is, I go in here before the period, I do parentheses, last name, comma, and then the year. Close parentheses, right? Very, very simple stuff. When you're doing it in text, all you need is last name, comma, year, and then notice that the punctuation goes after the citation, okay? Um, police motorcycle units can travel faster than police cars, right? Cite that. Aronson, comma, 1994. I'm picking random names and random years. But once again, um, period punctuation goes after the citation. If there are multiple authors, okay, what we have to do is, looks the exact same to start. You just do for, uh, first author's last name, ampersand, second author's last name, comma, year, close parentheses, okay? So with two authors, it's just uh, last name, ampersand, second last name, comma, year. Super simple. Let's say we've got three or more authors, okay? What we do is we type in the last name of the first author. Um, in this case, we'll do Orasco, comma, and then we don't want to list a whole bunch of last names. So we just do ET space AL period comma um, the year close parentheses so now if there's five authors you know Rasco Jones Jennings Johnson all those um, you just have to put in the last name of the first author and then this et al which is essentially fancy speak for and everybody else and then the year okay now in these first four examples this has been a paraphrase of what these authors said, okay? I'm not using their exact words, I'm just using their ideas, all right? Most of your citation should be like that. You take somebody else's idea, you put it in your own words, and then you cite them for the idea, not the actual language, right? But sometimes we want to give a direct quote, right? Boring conversation anyway, Luke, we're going to have company. So that's a direct quote. Somebody, those are somebody else's words, not just their idea, but their words. So the first thing we do is parentheses go, or the punctuation goes at the end. 
So we open uh, parentheses, last name, comma, year, comma, and then page, whatever page we found it on, that direct quote, okay? And then period. So if we paraphrase it, we don't have to give a page number. If it's a direct quote, it's last name, year, and then page, number, or whatever. And once again, punctuation goes on the outside, okay? If we want to use the author's name in a sentence, we can do that too. And it actually makes things a little bit easier, in fact, right? So we do Jennings claims that Return of the Jedi is demonstrably better than The Empire Strikes Back. And we could, if we wanted to, do a citation just like we did before with the last name and everything, but we've already used the author's name once. So we're going to do this instead, which is just as good. All we need is that. Okay, so we've got the author's name and the year, and that counts as the citation now. Okay, so author's last name, year in parentheses, and then you read this as part of the sentence. So Jennings claims that blah, 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 blah. Okay. Now, if we're doing multiple authors, remember up here we did multiple authors and we connected them with the ampersand when it's within the parentheses like that. When it's not in the parentheses, we actually spell out and. So Jennings and Rasko identified four major types of Star Wars fan. This, we're going to do Jennings and Rasko 2016 like that, right? So if it's within the sentence, you spell out and. If it's just within the parentheses, you use the ampersand for two authors. Okay, but this counts as an in-text citation just as good as one of these end-of-text citations. Okay, now when you're done writing your paper, you need to have a works cited page. Okay, what I highly recommend is getting instead. You know, a lot of people will finish their paper and then they'll put they need to put the works cited at the beginning of the next page. Whether the end of your paper is towards the end of the page or the end of your paper is towards the beginning of the page, doesn't matter. Your works cited needs to begin on the page after that with none, no part of your paper actually on it. If you just hit enter a bunch of times until you get to the top line of the next page and start your works cited page, um, any edits to the actual text can, can mess with that formatting. So the easier way to do it is when you get to the last sentence of your paper. So let's say that's the last sentence of our paper. We just hit enter, and then we do insert up here, page break. Okay, now we can make up here, we'll do works cited. Now we can make this shorter or longer, and it doesn't mess with where this is formatted because of that page break. Okay, does that make sense? Now we've got our works cited, and um, the good news is modern academic tools make it really easy to cite stuff. So here I found this article that I really want to cite, right? Opportunity and self-control. Do they predict multiple forms of online victimization? Um, Reigns, comma, et al. All right, because there's four authors. So it would just be in text. It would just be Reigns, comma, et al, 2019. Okay. But when we get to our end of text list, all we have to do is this is where we found it. This is the online service where we found this article, right? We just go over here to cite, click cite, and it'll pop up a window like this where it has all the different end of text citations in all these different formats, right? So there's MLA and Chicago and all those other um, inferior um, citation systems, but we're doing APA. So what we do is we take the APA citation highlight it, copy it, go back here, paste. Okay, that easy. They do it all for you. Now, if you're doing a, um, a copy and paste of a journal article like that, you don't really need the, the website or, the, the, or anything because it's the same just every time you find this um, published journal article. You don't need that kind of information there on the end. You just need exactly what the journal article was. Um, if it's a website or something that you're citing, you absolutely need that that date of, of um, when you got it. But if it's, a, if it's a published journal article, don't really need it. Now, if I have multiple of these, I need to make sure they're in alphabetical order by the last name of the first author, right? So if I also have Jennings, right? 
and then blah, blah, blah. We'll, we'll pretend this is a full end of text citations. J comes before R in the alphabet, so it needs to go before, um, they need to be sorted by that um, first letter in alphabetic order. It also needs what's called a hanging indent, which is actually really easy. All you have to do for a hanging indent is highlight all of your works cited stuff, right? Come up here and do, where is it? Paragraph, uh, page layout, paragraph, um, indentation, special, hanging. Okay. Now it does this hanging indent where the first line is off to the left and every subsequent line is indented, which is kind of the opposite of how an indent normally works with paragraphs and such, right? And that's it. That's it. It's that easy. It's super, super, super easy, okay? But if you need more help, if you need more help, the good news is there is a service that really, really helps. All you have to do, go to Google, type in Purdue Owl, like the bird, okay? That's the Purdue Online Writing Lab. Um, this has an entire giant APA guide. All this stuff is super, super um, helpful. It'll tell you all about how to do things. Like if your if your professor really cares about, um, you know, the the page numbers being in the right place and the bolds and italics being correct and all that stuff. This will tell you all of um, exactly how APA style wants all that done. Um, if you need a a refresher on on citations. Here's the, the, you know, it'll tell you all about how to do the in-text citations. Um, and it's really, really, really super helpful. Okay. So if you have any questions, please feel free to post them as comments to this video um, or send me an email. Um, thanks a lot.